adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do... Just about everything. All right, so today we have kind of a little mishmash of an episode here. For a while now, people have been asking me to go back and review some of the stuff we've made to see if they've like held up at the test of time, if we've like field tested them and how they perform. But also, we thought it would be fun since we've gone to like our first LARP to also talk about things that we would have done like in their place or just that we wish we had at the time. After all, it's a, it's a lot of fun to make things, but we want them to be useful. Yes, and we got a chance to field test a lot of this stuff. So L literally field test. We were rolling around <laughs> in the fields. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, Is that why they call it? It, it must be. <laughs> so we, we figured we'd take this in sections. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna hit with like the outer like armor first, and then we're gonna go into outer wear. Mm -hmm. So like all our hoods and cloaks and all that stuff that we've made over time. And which, then accessories. And then accessories. Anything else. Yeah, some of the other stuff. We and, got lazy after two categories. Yeah, <laughs> this is mostly just the stuff that we've actually literally field tested during that LARP and to see how it actually behaved. Mm. So starting with the armor, I- M Mostly a you thing, because I didn't wear any. She didn't I watched wear any. him wear some. But you helped me design a lot of this armor. Uh -huh. um, so I want to first talk about the things that didn't fare so well, I think is a good oh, way to start. Do tell. Okay, so this first one, was me being stupid. Uh -huh. um, they, they work great, but my oh. gloves here, my little ranger uh -huh. gloves, um, so, <laughs> I got impatient uh, when I was making Can I tell a story? Fine. So, we were getting ready for to go the first, like, call into character. Just finished setting up tent. We're all sweaty and it's hot out. And he's, he's putting on his gloves, putting on his armor, whatever. And then I hear a, a little, a little, oh no. As I turn around, he's taking off his glove and his hands are orange. Why were your hands orange, Kit? I got impatient while I was making these, uh -huh. and I decided to dip dye them mm -hmm. instead of just dye the surface. On the video, I showed it's not just even that much surface. On the video, I showed just dyeing the surface. Follow the video. Don't dip dye them because the the dye gets so saturated in there uh -huh. that it just as soon as I started to sweat, it it dyed my hands. Just bright orange. Just bright Which orange. Which then. You had you were constantly looking for something with alcohol in it that you could you could dilute it off of your hands. He Yo. used an entire bottle of one of my perfumes. <laughs> it was really funny. I turned around and I was I'm like, like <laughs> I'm like, don't use that one. <laughs> it turned out, by the way, if you do, this is a learning experience. Mm -hmm. If you do get a lot of dye on your hands, just straight up. Um, Hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I end up going. There's like uh, porta potties in the back yeah, with hand, hand sanitizer, sanitizer in them. You're and just like I'm like cleaning my hands. Someone off. else goes to the bathroom. Why is there no hand sanitizer? S since then, uh -huh. I've actually turned these inside out and I sealed them really well. And now I don't have that problem. But don't dip dye your gloves, kids. Doesn't work out well at all. <laughs> Unless or you have a lot maybe, of hand sanitizer. Maybe, oh, there. another thing I want to mention is. Um, I, and I'll bring it up more with uh, the belts later, but I don't think you sealed the inside of those either. So when I was wearing them on top of a white shirt, they started to like rub dye, even though the the, the back wasn't dyed. Yeah. The sides, uh, yeah, were right, enough where to like the edges, start to right? like yeah. like dye my shirt. So I was like, why is my shirt like orangish, and like the, weird? And those ones we'll get more into as well. But yeah, usually you want to like gum tragacanth your edges mm -hmm. to to seal that kind of in. Um, we did a bunch of stuff super last minute for this because we got rid of we got ready for it last minute. Yeah, yeah. Which again was why this one got dip dyed because I was like I don't have time, so I just Loop. dip dyed them and called it a day. Uh, but yeah, so there's there's that the first one. The other one I wanted to get into mm -hmm. um, was actually my one of my biggest armor builds uh -huh. here. So first things first. I do love this piece. It moves with me really well. Um, it's super comfortable, except I had to make an adjustment. I never wore it long enough, like swinging around swords or whatever, to feel how much this area here mm -hmm. was digging into my chest, to the side of my chest. Um, I would like have bruising and stuff. Like it was, it got really bad there for a bit. So I actually went the the um, Earl. the Earl there had a, a really small leather working kit and he let me borrow his razor and I just, I trimmed them on both sides mm -hmm. down more and that made it way more comfortable, but there was still another issue with it. And it's that I made it, when I made this template, if you go back and watch, mm -hmm. I made it by a t-shirt that I wrapped in um, duct tape. Yeah. 
I don't think I added enough extra to it mm -hmm. to give myself the room needed to actually put it on. So it, it, it fits my form really well. Yeah, it's great to have armor, but you don't like, put it on. <laughs> so here's the thing is it, it fits me. It does fit me. It's uh -huh. not that it doesn't fit. It's to put it on in order to buckle the buckles at the highest yeah. tier. I have to turn to do that. But in turning, I warp my body proportions so that I you're, can't. You're wider. I'm wider. So then. So when I tighten it and I go back, it's still loose and I swim in it. So I can't, for the life of me, friggin' tighten these things up so I'm not just swimming in it. You're just going to people around you and like, please uh, tighten my tighten, armor. Yeah, I need like a squire, right? So what I did to remedy that is I took all of the buckles off of it mm -hmm. and I instead put these little these little eyelets. You made it a corset. I made it a corset. I laced it like a corset. So now I open it up, I slide it on, and I pull down. And that works the bomb. That is good. So if you make one of these, if you're gonna make them with buckles and straps, make it so that the, the straps and stuff come really far mm -hmm. towards like your stomach so that you so can- So you can like face forward. Yeah, so you can actually <laughs> buckle them if you're not gonna have a squire of some sort helping you. I could you. have been your squire. I know you could have been my squire, but I wanted to be able to do stuff myself. I'm, a, I'm an independent warrior. So yeah, those are the two things, warnings for you. Make sure you give yourself extra room, especially with armor, because odds are you're gonna want to wear stuff underneath. So this is the this is the wish it would have been better pile. Wish it would have been better pile. Now for my like, like mwah, things Work that perfectly. were perfectly perfectly. I'm gonna go in order that I made them. Uh huh. So the first thing, these bracers. These aren't the exact ones I made in my very first episode, but I made these ones like the same day after I finished making those for my friend. I like them so much that I made my own. I love these bracers. Uh -huh. These things are like the shit. They got a little a little wolf on them and stuff, but they're just super comfortable. They worked really well. There's nothing crazy about them. They're just, they're bracers. Simplicity. But, yeah, but I like them. The next one here. Spice of life. Were my my, my little pauldrons here, right? Uh -huh. This thing. I wore it. How often did I wear this? I don't think you took them off. I don't think I took I them think off. You took, I think you wore them to bed. Yeah, like they're. They're super comfortable. They're, they they pill bug in on themselves. This design worked out. Mwah. It was comfortable the entire time. I never even felt like I was wearing any. They stayed in place. These were really, really well designed. I'm very happy with how these ones came out. Um, and the final one, someone you actually designed, mm. were these... Uh, what are they called? It goes on your greaves. Greaves, thank you. Greaves, my greaves of might. Greaves of might. Um, these I also wore the entire time, mostly because my shoes weren't like period accurate looking, and I kind of wanted to cover that over and make it look better. Um, yeah, these were great. They're all scuffed up and messed up right now. Because we field tested them. Because we field tested them. like With a field. We were in battle. I went through the woods in these things. Um, they got they rained on. Got rained on. Like, they, they stood the test of time. They stood up like a champ. So, yeah. These little greaves of might here, um, this turned out to be a great design. I really liked how these ones came out. So that's that's what we have for the armor pieces that so I actually got to try. Seal your die. Seal your die. Field test things before you go to a place where you might have to wear them. Yeah, give yourself space with your armor, especially mm. for, for like when you have it on and it all just kind of fits and you lay it against yourself, you might be like, yeah, this fits well. When you've got buckles and straps to contend with and you're trying to like reach around it, mm -hmm. uh, that's where it gets to be a little tricky. So definitely give yourself extra space when you're using these things. So now I think we can move on to- Outerwear? Outerwear. All right, so for our next things- We this, are dressed. We are dressed. Um, so this first one, I kind of want to address this because it was actually for my cursed druids mm -hmm. outfit. Um, it, it goes with so many things. It goes with so, yeah, it, so it's just like- It's such a good just layer. Just like a leather duster, right? Mm -hmm. Like just kind of this outer layer jacket. Um, this is another thing I wore almost the entire time. It I was, almost stole it. <laughs> yeah, it was through rain. Like everybody who saw it was like, that thing's dope. Um, and it was it was literally just like an under layer for the rest of the outfit. And I mm -hmm. saw it just before we left for, for Reckoning and I was like, Whatever, well, might that well might be throw cool. It on the pile. I love this thing. This thing yeah, came it, out like, great. It's a duster, it keeps you cool. Yeah. Or like it's a layer that just like looks. Well, and that's the thing, in like 90 degree weather, I uh -huh. still felt okay in this thing. Um, when we were going through the forest and stuff, it protected me from like, yeah. you know, getting brambles and stuff. You can even see brambles like, and um, stuff. like or... dark marks on it where it definitely protected you from brambles. <laughs> yeah, like it. it's just one of those pieces that 
I'm surprised at how functional it actually turned out I to be. I feel like so far the simplest pieces that we've made are the most functional just because yeah. they like they can be applied in different ways. Right. Moving on from this, mm -hmm. I know you you both of us wore the Ruana cloaks yeah, you that made I made. It a slightly smaller version that was mine. Yeah. I couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. Um, I think so, I stole yours eventually. I know you had trouble with the, the Ruana cloak. Yeah, so like, I, I didn't have time to play with it before, so it was a very good tester of like, is it usable? Right. Without knowing specifically how to use it. Um, it's, it's very stiff and thick, mm -hmm. and... I couldn't really wrap it well because every time, ever like every way I'd wrap it, like you can use it as a hood because we're trying not to get rained on, and like you would go to move and it would just fall apart right. and fall off. So it needs um, to be longer. So like having it be longer, having it be maybe not so much of like a bulky material. Yeah. And then, like um, the wax makes it even stiffer. So any way that I would wrap, like you knew what to do right. or whatever. Well, even but... even for me though, so that's a good point. So even for me, um, putting it over my head, and mine was a little bit longer, but I'm also taller than she is, mm -hmm. right? So I think definitely longer where I put it about about knee length, I think I'd probably end up going like mid mid calf length next time. I think mm -hmm. that kind of coverage would be better. And I saw some people commenting on the video for making it of like, that we should have made it longer. Longer, yeah. Um, and I can definitely see that being infinitely more useful. And I think you're right too on the, the weight I used on this. I mm -hmm. found like the bulkiest tarp that they sold at Harbor Freight. Um, and they had much, much lighter ones, but I was thinking like, hey, a bulkier one's gonna hold a little bit more wax, maybe it'll be better. I actually now think the opposite. I think if we went with a lighter weight, mm -hmm. one, it would be more flowy. Yeah. But two, it would take way less wax to waterproof uh -huh, it. Which would then make it less stiff and whatever. Yeah, right. Because um, like you, you mentioned that it's great when it's wax because it heats up with your body and then like kind of molds too. Right. But it was raining, so it was cold. <laughs> so it was cold, right. Um, but it, it held up with like water really well. Yeah. I we we were in torrential downpours torrential. marching through the woods and it did keep water off of yeah, us. Yeah, no, it the only reason I got wet, which I still was drier than the people around me, the only reason I got wet was because I couldn't wrap it efficiently around me. So, so when I was underneath. moving, it was falling off of like my head yeah. and then getting under and then it was getting like water on the other side. Right. And that was, but I still was like, even not being able to, to wrap it the way I wanted to, drier than everyone else. Yeah, so I'm gonna call this one a, like a, a partial success. Definitely works. A learning experience. A learning experience. Needs to be longer and a less bulky fabric. Uh -huh. um, unless we were doing it like not a wax canvas, but if we did it straight up on a wool. Because mm -hmm. then it would drape and be heavy. A lot of times weight plays a big, you know, with if a bulkier fabric, you need it to be heavier, like longer, so that mm -hmm. it will flow around you a little bit better. Um, but I, I wore mine pretty much all the time too, and it did the, like by being by yeah, the like campfire. Even, even like this, it feels like it's like it's like crisp, right? Yeah, yeah, it feels it feels very stiff. Stiff, yeah. like it's getting in my way a lot more than it's useful. Yeah, unless um, it's torrential downpour, then I don't care how much. It's yeah, my then it is the stuff. <laughs> then it is the stuff. Yeah. So that's that's that one there. The last one I wanted mm -hmm. to point out was actually my cloak of the assassin. Um, Did you assassinate many people? I didn't assassinate many people. I didn't even know you brought that until it like got pulled out. Yeah, so this this thing here, um, I love this cloak. Mm -hmm. I love this cloak. It's got a, uh, just the biggest hood. Like you do not need a hood this big at all. It, like, it, it's like the size of two hoods. And it's just because I love that like, like Jedi stupid huge hood. Like it like, eats my head. Uh-huh. Like it, there's it's, no... Im it's immeasurably large. Yeah, but it's so comfortable and like, you know, when it's a cold night or whatever and you're just out by the fire, mm -hmm. it's really nice for that. Actually, I didn't use it very often. Ash used it. I used it. it too a little bit. Yeah, used it and Ash was like, I'm cold and I don't want to go back. It was after we, we marched and her, her hood soaked completely through. Um, so all her stuff was wet. So I'm like, I've got a cloak you could use. Mm -hmm. And she just like was eaten by this thing. Yeah, so sleeping. I actually have experience using it as well because when I came up last year during mm -hmm. the uh, for Halloween, I wore it <laughs> yeah. around and it's it's just so massive. Right, yeah. On me, on me, it's still big because I wanted it to be big. Uh -huh. On her, it swallows her world. Like it's just. I can't. I literally can't do anything. I'm just. I. I am cloaked. Yeah. <laughs> Which is another thing. I mean, the same with the armor, where you want to make sure you leave yourself enough room. Mm -hmm. Depending on what you want to like, do. Yeah, flowy, like drapey things. Like yeah. you have to be careful not to give yourself too, too much, much because yeah. then it will eat your world. Yeah, right. Another thing I will say with it though, because it is an actual wool, it's like a felted wool fabric. 
that tends to be lighter. It's super light. So if you're not careful, and you don't add like I think the lining helps with mine. It mm -hmm. adds enough weight that it will drape down. If you just try making it just with the felted wool, I think it will like lift around you. That's actually a thing I'd never thought of for cloaks and whatever until you mention it where the weight of it like it has to justify it. It's it's, it's length right. basically. It has to pull itself down or else it's just gonna get in your way. But that's that's our, our outermost wear here. I think we, we've got one last thing to go through and that's Which is our, the everything else. Our accessories, right? Just the other stuff we brought for usefulness. So we're gonna grab that right now. Okay, so here are the accessories, the little bits and bobbles that I made. Oh, let me grab this too, right? Oh yeah, okay. You know, when they say accessorize. <laughs> this is how you should accessorize right here. Um, well, we, well, since you brought it up, this thing mm -hmm. was one of the most useful. And then, okay, I didn't make the axe. I just made the axe look better, right? The axe made is great. Everything I made about everything it. about it. Mm -hmm. um, I freaking love this thing. Mm -hmm. This came out great. Even this kind of throw away the little the the covering I had. Mm -hmm. This thing is great because I, I used it as a hammer for tent spikes. I didn't want to cut myself as I'm going. Uh huh. Um, that a good camp axe is what's up, and this thing. And it looks in character. Yeah, this this helped us have a tent. Like, I don't think we would have had a tent if it wasn't for this, cutting down the tent poles itself, uh -huh. shaping all yeah, the, spi you, the spikes. We, we came from so many trips, we couldn't like have tent poles brought with yeah. us, so we had to cut them from the woods <laughs> as we were setting up everything. I think the first the first night, dinner was delayed. We're like, thank God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just still trying to put up our tent, and my hands are orange. Uh, <laughs> it's awful. Uh, speaking of orange we yep. mentioned the belts earlier as yes. um like i think you actually did dye them on the inside because they're orange on the inside yes um the, these are interesting so I, I didn't i've made belts before on this channel uh -huh. you guys didn't see me make these particular belts because it was like a last minute i was i was staining these in the hotel room while i was on a business trip that's how last minute these ones were <laughs> that's fantastic um, so, so I, I had one request of you uh, i wanted a ring belt because I, I needed stuff to hang stuff off of right. and i knew you were going to need pouches and whatever so you're like done and yeah. in the hotel room I'm in the hotel the room there. making making belts um so here's some things we learned from these belts though yeah um one, yeah, so because I was doing it in the hotel room, none of it is sealed. Like, these ones aren't sealed, actually. So and that, that's, it stained yeah. all of my clothing. So again, <laughs> seal your leather once you've done it. Uh -huh. um, the other thing, though, is this is actually quite thick. I want to say this is like seven to eight ounce leather. Mm -hmm. And in normal belts, like where you've got the, the little keeper, like the belt keeper and stuff, absolutely fine. In these type of ring belts where you have to wrap them and tie them, that is way too thick. Oh yeah, I couldn't, like, for the first part of the LARP, I, I, I almost couldn't keep it tight enough that it was useful. Right, and if you can see here, I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera, see how deformed this looks here? Yeah, because I remember when I first, when I first started using it, you were like, it'll break in, it'll be fine. It broke in, but because it's so thick and because it's like, um, like oiled, oiled, it's yeah. not oiled or anything to make it softer. It's super un. It's un it doesn't want to yeah. do anything except deform. So like right. for your chest piece or whatever, that's very stiff. It yep. doesn't. It's fine. Especially like your greaves, like the only bend is to pull them around your legs. Right. Um, but for something like a belt or like um, your gloves, like they're leather that has to move with you a lot. And if they're getting in your way or they're gonna start to like crack and deform and stuff with movement. Um, you're gonna want to like oil it and and use thinner leather and use the stretchier right. leather. Like take in consideration how it's gonna be used. For sure. What you put on that belt. Yeah. So the was my nutsack. Nutsack. My nutsack. Which is surprisingly hard to get into. Is it hard? It's hard to get into my nutsack. Turns out. Yeah. You're here first. So like you you pull it tight and it tightens and closes and whatever. But it leaves this like loose bit on the side that things can fall out of and fall out of things. I lost everything. I, I ran everywhere in the LARP, and every time I ran, it would do, 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 and like coins would go flying. I lost my like cookware, like right. my, my cooking utensil things. But why? Because there's another thing inside that I didn't really realize, which is that you can pull this tight. And I was like, cool, fine, whatever. I didn't even think to tie it. 
because for my but, but it's not because I'm dumb it's because for my functionality I was constantly taking right. things in and out of it and having two layers of like tightening to me that was the closure so I, I think <laughs> you had a good point when we were discussing this mm -hmm. where she said if you're gonna have something with like the two closures like that where it really depend is dependent upon that primary closure mm -hmm. to keep everything inside the this would be for like if you had things like fire starter material or stuff you don't need all the time yeah it's not something you open and close and, and then right. like go into all of the time it's something that maybe you put on your back and it's like the things you want with you but like once right mm -hmm. um so yeah that's my my nut sack it, it's a good sack it worked really well it good just for, like, also, like anything, you'd have to have it open, like collecting berries or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's just not good for like in and out. Right. It's not your wallet. It's not your LARP mm -hmm. wallet, right? I, I tried to use it as a LARP wallet. Turns out, didn't work. Lost all my coins. <laughs> uh, after the battle where I was rolling around, I was like, where did all, Where's my, all my stuff? Where's all my stuff? Combing through the tick infested grass. Um, so speaking of the grass, I rolled mm. on this. So this is this is my my quiver. Oh, yeah, it's uh, dirty. It's still full of my LARP arrows. Uh -huh. um, I was rolling on the grass just constantly with this thing. Uh -huh. So two things with this. One, as far as having it on you and being able to roll around and have like real maneuverability and holding my stuff worked great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fine. The problem with it is I think it's how you hold it. So if you have a crossbody, right? Uh -huh. You're not the arrows. You can't get them. Good job. <laughs> right, right. But I didn't. I didn't leave the strap long enough to be able to wear it down here. Right. So I couldn't like drape it here and not have the the, the fletching just in my face. Uh -huh. Right. So to use it, I end up having to like we were in the big battle and I had this on my back and I'm here and and people are coming at me. So I ended up having to just run and then stop. So all of my arrows went flying out of the top of them. So then I could pick them up off the, the ground and yeah, use them that way. So I would probably make this a little bit longer so I could either have it kind of as a side quiver um, or I'd make like an, a belt attachment so I can actually have my arrows here. But that That's my only critique on this one. Otherwise, I really like the design. I liked how it came out. The little pouch was functional. The knife is fantastic. The knife is great and it, this held really tight. Uh -huh. Everything was perfect. Held, um, held through you rolling around. It's rolling around, yeah. Field testing. It's very much field testing. We should get a t-shirt, field testing. Field testing. And uh, it's I'm, just like dirt. <laughs> the very last thing that I have on my uh -huh. docket for, for um, items, I guess, mm -hmm. is my horn mug. This is this is great. Uh, this worked fantastic, and it's actually the thing I you kind of- compliments on it too. Yeah, I, it's the thing I kind of had the least amount of faith in. I, I feel like anything that I use to hold mm -hmm. liquids, there's, you don't trust. there's, yeah, there's such a variable in it where, and honestly, all the mugs, like we've been uh -huh. using, we've been going camping with the other mugs too, the ones I did for the Tri Maker Tournament Challenge. Uh -huh. They're all working out great. Also, a thing to point out about your mug is you couldn't drink your coffee. Right, yeah, you can't drink because it's sealed with wax can't drink hot liquids out of it. So you had to use my mug for it. Yeah, and that that's that's one that I have yet to conquer. All of my mugs mm -hmm. um, are sealed in such a way where I wouldn't I wouldn't want to use hot water with it. I mean, my my big ones there, the mm -hmm. the, the Tri Maker Tournament ones, one of them sealed with wax. The other one is actually sealed with like a, um, a shellac, a food a food grade shellac. So if you have a good way of sealing things for heat, so I'd love to get the get drink. So that you coffee addiction in? Not even just coffee addiction, but like if we go out in the, the fall or in the winter time, like I'd love to have like a hot, like a mulled cider or something like that it would be so great. But yeah, it would just melt the wax. Like what would you seal something with that you could drink a hot mead or a coffee with? Right, it's like uh, maybe like a brewer's pitch perhaps or, or a pine a pine pitch. Yeah, let us know because I, I genuinely would love to make something with it that will stand and, that test. Yeah. But all in all, this was a fun, really easy build. I recommend you make one of these. One thing we did use though that actually we've consistently used and is great is uh -huh. our tent. That yeah. tent, holy crap, I guys. can't believe that you were only like 40% sure it wouldn't collapse on us. I, and you you were like, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's, fine. it's good. It's and fine. then when it started raining, you, you just got real quiet because we weren't near our tent. And every once in a while you're like, we should go check on the tent. I'm so scared to check on the tent. It's gonna be, like, when I come back, it's gonna be collapsed. And we, can't, we got there and he, he immediately went inside. It was fine. Yeah. He went inside, ran his hands on the inside and he's like, it's dry. Bone dry. Bone it, it, dry. And this wasn't just rain. It was a torrential, torrential downpour. downpour. Like bad enough that the the canopies and stuff of the main area were like threatening on collapse. Yeah, they were all like buckling in and stuff. But that tent, 
perfect. So yeah, that's a successful one for sure. I'm very, ha I'm very happy with mm -hmm. that because that took a lot of work. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's it. That's what we got. That's kind of our comprehensive things that we got to really field mm -hmm. test that we've made so far. But in the meantime, tell us how to level these up. <laughs> yeah, tell us, tell us if there's anything that you saw, like with the belts or with the armor or anything that you would like to give us tips on on how to make them even better. I wouldn't mind even revisiting some of these projects mm -hmm. and just kind of- It would be of... fun to go back to old projects and kind of use new skills and techniques that we've yeah, learned and like for make sure. them better. Yep. All right, so if you like what we what we do here, why don't you give us some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when we release new content. And in the meantime, keep leveling up, you. Thank you for staying to the end screen. The almighty algorithm loves it when you do. We really appreciate your support by doing just that. Another great way to support us, though, is by joining these incredible people on our Patreon. Their generosity is what makes us able to do any of this. And while I'm shouting them out, let me shout out our newest high tier level Patreon members, Vex Stonebeard and Alex Moores. Thank you for joining our Patreon again. That means just everything. We really appreciate the support. Another way to support us is just by clicking on one of these videos here that YouTube thinks you'd like. Go on. I'll, uh, I'll wait. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>